Right, hi, my name is Karen DeGrazia. I'm a sophomore in the college and I'm majoring in anthropology and human biology. And today I'm going to talk to you about Uncaria tomentosa, which is a member of the Rubiaceae family. So just a general overview, it's commonly known as cat's claw or Uzintagato, and it's found in the rainforest of in the tropical Americas. Um, so it was traditionally used by the Peruvian tribes for a variety of treatments ranging from fever to birth control, and it's a potential treatment for cancer and rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, cat's claw is a woody vine, and the main vine can be up to 20 centimeters in diameter. And coming off it are these stems that have these uh, sickle thorns on them, and that's why it gets its name uh, cat's claw. And then it has these beautiful yellow flowers, and it grows in the rainforest. And the only other um, member of the Uncaria family that is also in the tropical Americas is Uncaria guinensis, and so these often get confused. But the difference is that the flowers of Uncaria guinensis are more like red-orange, and the <coughs> thorns are very hook-shaped. So if you ever see a picture with this really crazy curled thorn, it's not Uncaria tomentosa. Um, so it's traditionally used by tribes in Peru, but most commonly the Ashinika, um, because they've been using it the longest. And so their model of healthcare, they believe that every person consists of a physical being, a spiritual being, and then a being that mediates between them. And so if you're healthy, everything is in, in order and balanced, and then when you're sick, something comes out of balance. Um, and so cat's claw is regarded as a magical plant that can help facilitate the mediator. So it's only used by priests, which just highlights how important it is. Um, so it's usually made into a decoction from the dry bark, and it's used for a variety of illnesses such as asthma, cancer, cirrhosis, fever, gastritis, diabetes, rheumatism, century, and inflammation of the urinary, urinary tract. So you can see it's all over what it treats. Um, but it's also commonly treat, or treats um, women's health, so it can be used to aid in birth control and childbirth and um, to correct menstrual irregularities. And so the way it's used as a birth control is you drink a cup of the decoction for three months, and then it promotes sterility for three to four years. Um, so it contains alkaloids, triterpenes, quinoic acid, glycosides, flavonoids, glucose, cyanates, sterile polyunsaturated fatty acids and carbolanes. And so the bark contains um, the glycosides, the alkaloids, the triterpenes, and then the roots can contain the alkaloids. And it was recently discovered that cat's claw has two chemotypes, which means that the secondary metabolite differs slightly, but it's the same species. Um, and this is important because one of the species has pentosilic alkaloids and the other one has tetrasilic alkaloids. And the pentosilic alkaloids are the good ones that give you those health benefits that you want. And the tetrasilic ones can actually have negative consequences. So this is important when you're figuring out what, like, which one you're taking. Um, so it's been found to have anti-cancer properties. So when it's been tested on uh, leukemic cell lines, it induces apoptosis. And then um, it has an anti-inflammatory response in rats. And then there was also an antiviral effect against the rhino virus. Um, and in rats, it also had an immunostimulant effect. And um, it also, again, in rats protected against mutations. And then um, it had birth control effects in rats as well, where it actually inhibited the uterine cell growth. And then when it was tested in C. elegans, it had neuroprotective effects on that. Um, so some of the clinical studies, it's been uh, used as a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. And so the patients who received cat's claw um, experienced less pain than the control group. And then it's also been used as an adjunct cancer treatment, which means that uh, Women who had breast cancer and were getting chemotherapy got cat's claw along with it. And then they had reduced neutropenia, which is a low white blood cell count. So it was found to be extremely effective. Um, the problem with these two studies, and actually the third one I'll talk about, is they're very small. So it's too big for it to actually be conclusive, so they need a lot more studies done on it. Um, and the anti mutagenic properties were, the way that they figured that out was they gave a man who was a smoker and a man who was a smoker a cat's claw decoction for 15 days. And then the end, they tested their urine, and it found out that the smoker had fewer mutations. And so some of the contraindications, um, rats were tested with an acute toxicity dosage. And so they found out that they had a large liver, a large spleen, um, problems with their stomach. But all of these problems, if the rats survived, went away within five days. So, and then also, some of them had um, enlarged kidneys, which is, Kind of inconclusive though because it's only rats, so they're not quite sure how that will translate. And then it's found that taking cat's claw supplements might interact with drugs that have protease inhibitors, so that's just something to be careful of. 
And then also, a lot of manufacturers are unaware that there are two different chemotypes, so they did a study where they tested all the supplements that are currently on the market and found that they contain both penicillin and tetracyl uh, alkaloids. So the best source is obviously the plant itself because then you know exactly what you're getting. And it could range from getting good alkaloids to bad alkaloids if you buy it in the store. Um, and also, since it was typically used as a birth control agent or it's been found to be an immunostimulant, pregnant women and people with uh, a compromised immune system should probably avoid it just to be safe. Um, so as you can see, it's currently sold. Um, you can buy it in health food stores or online. It typically comes in a tablet, even though I've seen it in like a little dropper before. Um, and even though the results were inconclusive, it's still taken along with chemotherapy just for as a personal choice for a lot of people or just by the general public as a tonic because it treats pretty much anything you can think of. Um, so in conclusion, cat's claw has been used traditionally for centuries. Um, it's been referred to as a magical or powerful plant and uh, it has promising potential to treat rheumatoid arthritis and cancer.